Hi, and welcome to the video for Module 1, Section 4. This is a learning video for nominal versus effective interest rates. Uh, even though this is a learning video, a lot of times it's uh, easier to introduce the material by use of examples. So let's look at a couple of examples to illustrate this material. First example, uh, let's talk about Amy. Amy deposits $1,000 into an account which credits interest using a quarterly effective interest rate of 2%. And the question is, how much will Amy have in the account uh, after six months? So a, a timeline, a natural timeline that, that we could use for, for this problem would look like this. We have 1,000 deposited at time zero. And the question is, after six months, how much is, is, uh, is in the account? And of course, uh, the cap Y value would be equal to 1,000 times A of 6 in this, in this timeline, in this picture, uh, where A of 6 is 1 plus I to the sixth power because I, was, I know that I'm compounding interest. So we're compounding. Uh, when I'm compounding interest, the accumulation function is, is uh, 1 plus I to the 6th power. Where this I is, because I'm accumulating for 6 month, months, this I should be a monthly effective interest rate. And so let me illustrate that by using an M for I. So M is the monthly effective interest rate. But now let's go back to the problem and we'll see that the interest rate is not given, us to, given to us as a monthly effective interest rate. It's given to, given to us as a quarterly effective interest rate. And so because the interest rate is given to me as a quarterly effective interest rate, let's change the, the, the timeline, units on a timeline. Instead of quarters, let's make those months. And then instead of months, let's make those quarters. And so the quarters would go from, quarter, from, from a time zero, 1,000 in at time zero, to six months later would be two quarters. Two quarters later, uh, I have an amount uh, cap Y. And then, of course, I could rewrite the expression, the, the equation of value, and write this as a cap Y equals 1,000 now times A of 2, where uh, A of 2 is 1 plus I squared because it's a, uh, that's the accumulation function for um, uh, compounding, when compounding interest, 1 plus I to the T, or 1 plus I squared here, where I is measured, uh, or I is the periodic effective interest rate where the period matches the, the time units here on, on the timeline, which is quarters. So I'll use a Q then for that. And then this is very easy to, uh, to proceed from here because the actual problem tells us that the quarterly effective interest rate is 2%. In other words, that Q in the, in the line above that, that is the quarterly effective interest rate. So plug in a 2 for uh, Q here, and we get that the accumulated value that Amy has at time 2 is, is $1,040.40. Okay, so now let's tweak the problem a little bit. Looks like we're tweaking it a little bit. Uh, let's talk about Bob. So Bob's going to deposit 1000 into an account which credits interest using, let's rephrase how, how the interest is credited here, using an interest rate of 8% compounded quarterly. I'm sure you've seen these before uh, in, 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 in your you know, math, math classes from way back when. Question again, how much will Bob have in the account after six months? So now the key thing I want to focus on here is now this says an 8% quarterly, uh, 8%, the interest rate is 8% compounded quarterly. When it's given to you this way, it's called a nominal rate. Uh, as opposed to Amy's rate, Amy's account, the rate was given to us as an effective rate. This is a nominal rate. Nominal means in name only. So it's just in name only, that's the rate. It's an annual rate. And it's going to be denoted this way by that symbol right there, which is pronounced an I upper four. So that symbol is an I upper four. You're going to see this symbol throughout the rest of the course. So get used to seeing symbols uh, like that. Uh, and so we, in this case, we would write I upper four equals 0 0.08. Now, what does that mean that I upper four equals, equals 0 0.08? The 8% is an annual rate. And what that means is, and it's compounded quarterly, four times a year. By the way, that's why I'm using an I per four. It's corresponding to the quarterly part. Quarterly means uh, four times per year. So that's where the four is. And the 8% is an annual rate. And the way, it's, the, way the interest is, is being accrued is 8% over the year. And it's split up as 2% effective each quarter. And so we would take the 8% divided by 4 in this case to get 2%, and 2% would be the quarterly effective interest rate. And then we're back to the, really, it's the exact same problem as, as Amy's problem. Bob has the amount 1,000 times 1 plus 0.02 squared also. Again, the quarterly effective interest rate 0.02 means the quarterly accumulation factor is 1.02, and then we're accumulating for two quarters, so uh, that 
two quarter accumulation will be 1.02 squared uh, and I got 1040. So let's look at the problems next to, next to one another and see that they really are the same problem. In Amy's problem, the second line there says that the uh, interest rate is a 2% quarterly effective interest rate. Again, that's, uh, uh, that's just given and, and, and that's the quarterly effective interest rate is what's used in the expression for the accumulation function. Whereas Bob's problem, we have a, a one step to an extra step Bob is get, uh, Bob's interest rate is given to us as a nominal rate compounded quarterly, and so uh, we have to divide that rate by four since it's compounded quarterly to get the quarterly effective interest rate of 2%, just an extra step in Bob's uh, problem. So again, let's, let's look at Bob's situation. Let's talk about this, uh, these nominal rates a little bit more. Uh, I want to uh, emphasize that when you see the word compounded, that's what's uh, that's what's you know triggering you to know that that's a a nominal rate. So you'll see the word compounded um, and uh, the the four percent. I'm sorry, the eight percent compounded quarterly. I would divide by four uh, uh, because it's compounded quarterly. That's four times uh, per per year. Uh, different names for a compound or synonyms for compounded would be core, uh, converted. So you might see uh, an 8% converted quarterly or an 8% payable quarterly. So again, if it says 8% compounded quarterly or converted quarterly or payable quarterly, those are all just uh, synonym, synonyms for the same thing. Uh, and most often you're going to see it worded as, as, a, as compounded quarterly. So now let's, look, let's focus on the, 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 the time period now. What if instead of compounded quarterly, it said it's compounded monthly? In that case, our notation would be not an I upper 4, but an I upper 12. Monthly means 12 times per year, so I'd have an I upper 12 equal 0 0.08, and then I would divide the I upper 12 by 12. 8% is an annual rate, so monthly I would get 8% divided by 12 as the monthly effect interest rate for each month and that numerically is the 0 0.006 uh, repeating. Likewise, I could, it, the problem might say compounded quarter, uh, semi-annually. If it does, I would use an I upper 2 of 0.08 and then the semi-annual effective rate, uh, semi-annual effective interest rate would be the 0.08 over 2 which is 0 0.04. Uh, another kind of tricky one you might see is compounded biannually. Well, it's biannually that semi-annually means twice a year biannually means once every two years and so I actually use a one half as the as the superscript here the I upper one half would be 0 0.08 I divide 0 0.08 by one half to get the biannual effective interest rate of 0.16 uh, biannual effective interest rate of 0.16 in, in this situation okay uh, so generally I upper M is going to de denote the nominal annual interest rate you don't normally see those words that's why I have it in parentheses the nominal annual but it's the it, it, it is a nominal it is an annual interest rate compounded M times per year uh, you would divide whatever that number is by M to get what the periodic effective interest rate would be uh, for each of those M periods uh, per year. You'll never take an I upper 2 and divide it by like a 4. You'd only take an I upper 2 and divide it by 2. You would only take an I upper 4 and divide it by 4. You're never going to take an I upper M and divide it by some other N value, for instance. Okay, so uh, you're going to see this throughout the rest of this course, this type of, of notation throughout the rest of the course and on uh, actuarial exams, uh, a lot of actuarial exams to come. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.